hello everyone in this tutorial we are going to discuss a multiple choice question for phase 1 exam for basic mechanical engineering so I hope you have watched all the previous lectures on unit number 1 and 2 this lecture is focused on only multiple choice question and all theoretical content which we covered in the last video series of unit 1 and 2 so we'll just start with the multiple choice question basically in this lecture we'll be discussing all the concepts and the content of unit 1 and 2 briefly so that in minimum time you can prepare unit 1 as well as 2 so here we go first we'll be discussing unit number 2 that is design fundamentals so what kind of question on this topic you will get for phase 1 exam on the definition based so basic term what is a design so you may get question like definition of design so question will be the formulation of plan is or formulation of plan to satisfy the need is defined as and the options will be design or maybe link kinematic chain kind of so you need to just go through with the basic concept and the fundamentals of unit 1 and 2 for the multiple choice question preparation point of view so the first we are starting with unit number 2 design so the first definition what is design it's a formulation of the plan to satisfy functional requirement that is in human need second topic will be as a definition of machine design so what is a basically design of machine that simply means selecting a materials size shape and arrangement of mechanical elements to perform a specific task or to satisfy functional requirement that process is called as machine design so on this topic you may get lot of question on machine design that may be on definition or that may be the different factors depends on machine design that means you may get question like the process of selection of material shapes and size is called as and the options will be machine design and all other options may be irrelevant so you should know only the definitions strictly next why we go with the design so these are the basic reason why we go with the design of any machine component so design should be for functional requirement safety cost reduction optimization compactness comfort appearance and innovation so these eight factors are important so out of which you may get any three or four option or last maybe one of all of the above so you should know these are the basic causes or the need of the design next the types of design so on this topic you the question may be the design of car is which type of machine design option may be product system element or autocad or maybe computer aided design so as a preparation you should know the types of design as a product system and element product means a complete object so that is example as mentioned here design of car cranes so it's subsystem that is sub part of the product will be called as a system that is gearbox brake clutch etc whereas the subsystem of system design will be element so in the reverse order if you go that will be like this element means shaft gear keys bearing when we combine this we may form one system of gearbox or clutch and when different systems are connected together we may form one product so for MCQ you should know the types and their examples so product design system design and element design so next topic again empirical design in a types of design when we have a design based on theoretical experiments or developed the logics and the formulas developed by using some past experience or practice that is called as empirical design optimum design and computer aided design so these are the few types of design mostly you'll get the question on this three types that is product design system design and element design means question will be design of shaft is which type of machine design or which type of design and the options will be product system element or maybe empirical design so you need to select correct one next very to important topic steps in the design process so it is as sequence 
you should remember the sequence for two marks MCQ. First step, need of design. There should be the need of problem. Then we define the problem. Second, synthesis. Once we define problem, second will be synthesis. That is finding out the mechanism or selecting the mechanism for the problem. Next, analysis of forces. Selection of material. Once we have selected the mechanism, that is synthesis, analysis is done, then material selection process. Then we find out the failure criteria and last we can combine these steps to remember. First will be this definition of problem, second will be synthesis, third will be analysis of forces and then we select materials so material selection will be later on process then failure finding out the failure criteria factor of safety that is we can say combined step finding out the dimension will be the second last step and if required any modification last step will be preparation of drawing which consists of in detail part as well as assembly of the object and the last preparation of desired report many times these two steps are combined so we may say the preparation of drawing it may be the last step or sometimes as design report these steps are very important for MCQ next question may be to have a sequencing for the steps now mechanical property the meaning of property term is behavior of material to the external forces that is the meaning of property word so mechanical properties are as discussed when you are subjecting any component to the forces, external stresses, then how that material reacts, that mechanical property we learned in the lectures. So the different types of forces, here you can see the tensile, compressive, bending and the torsion types of forces. Same here is explained with some schematic and the 3D diagrams, tension stress, compressional stress as well as shear stress. So stress is nothing but force upon area that is internal resistance offered by material and as a formula force upon area Newton per meter square. Strain is change in length upon original length so we can say the strain can be defined as relative change in the dimension due to the externally applied forces that is simply I can say delta L by L. No dimension it is a unitless term whereas the stress unit is Newton per meter square or Pascal. Next, strength will be ability of material to resist stresses without failure. So that is we can call the strength. If the load is static, it is static load. If it is fatigue load, it is called the fatigue strength. Fatigue as a cyclic load here you can see. Fatigue strength is very important in case of the component like shaft, bearings, where the components are subjected to fatigue load so we can say that kind of strength is fatigue strength when the load varies with respect to time in a magnitude as well as direction that is called as a fluctuating cycling or fatigue load elasticity and plasticity two opposite property in elasticity material regain get back its original dimensions when the load is removed Whereas plasticity it retains means it gives a permanent deformation when the load is removed. So these are the few terms which we learned. Next ductility very important property of wires or we can say the property which can be drawn into wires hence it is useful in case of wire drawing property. So ductility always decreases with the increasing temperature. It can be measured with the percentage elongation. So we can say if the percentage elongation is more than 5% material is a ductile. Opposite property brittleness, ability of material to rupture, crack or the break is brittleness. And if the percentage elongation is less than 5 that is brittleness. Example is cast iron. So all the metals like copper, steel are ductile whereas cast iron is a brittle one. Malleability is the property which enables to undergo the change in size and shape without rupture. So in simple word I can say 
the property which can be formed into thin sheet under compressive load so very important it's a compressive load without rupture and malleability always increases with the temperature so remember ductility decreases d for d whereas malleability increases with the temperature mi types of failure which can occur for materials are brittle and ductile so here you can see a figure the component fails crack or rupture without any deformation whereas b and c indicates neck formation or that's yielding which gives you the deformation before the component fails you can see the actual diagrams for ductile failure well known diagram stress strain curve for ductile materials with the different curves as shown ultimate is a maximum strain and finally component fail that is fracture point so it is clearly explained in the self explanatory diagram different states of material stress strain diagram for as again ductile material so here you can see the point a is elastic point before a we have a proportional limit where the hooks law is applicable then point b and the c are the yield point where yielding takes place that means plasticity starts whereas point d is ultimate stress that is maximum point and point e is a rupture or the breaking point on the stress strain diagram here you can see a lot of question on this diagram so red color diagram that is you can see that is explained here brittle example cast iron so you can observe here the component fails without deformation so hence it is brittle in nature this example may be the cast iron whereas this diagram indicates a deformation and yielding takes place before the component fails and that is the ductile material as mentioned it may be the any kind of steel so let's say plain carbon steel so what exactly question on this diagram you may get identify the curve names now here area under the curve is equal to absorbed energy which is the property of material as toughness so we say that energy absorbed by material before it fails or before it rupture or there may be the crack formation that energy absorbed without failure is called as toughness so this whole area under the curve represent toughness so if more the material is a ductile we get more tougher material because elongation will be more accordingly we get tougher material next here another important property as energy absorbed by material in the elastic range that is called as resilience so the total energy absorbed will be toughness whereas energy absorbed by material in the elastic range is called as resilience which is shown in the diagram as yellow color this property of resilience is important in case of spring next hardness property is ability to cut other softer material or to scratch other material so the hardness as it is mentioned logical answer harder material is used for this property will be useful for cutting tool applications like drill bit hardness is measured in case of different numbers as brinell hardness number rockwell hardness number and vickers hardness test or number you can see this diagram for mcq you may get kind of figure to identify which property it resembles it is hardness same is explained with this animation here how this hardness test are done that is a brinell hardness test so small indented diameter is pressed on the soft material and accordingly they find out brinell hardness number so this diagrams for hardness property or brinell hardness test next one is resilience as mentioned capacity to absorb energy in the elastic range hence it is is useful in case of shocks and impact load toughness will be the total energy before failure these two properties are 
we can say toughness and hardness because when the material is harder the percentage of carbon is more so it becomes brittle one whereas when we want more tougher material it should be ductile so toughness is opposite to hardness this is one more animation for charpy impact test or it is also called as izor test so you can understand from uh, this animation the impact load is allowed to fall on this small notch or small specimen material and that it turns to some notch which is called as charpy impact test next the creep creep is a progressive deformation under the constant load at high temperature so this property of creep is very useful in case of turbine high temperature devices like boiler or furnace so progressive deformation at constant load at elevated or high temperature is called as creep all these previous properties are summarized here strength elasticity plasticity one more additional property stiffness or rigidity this is important in case of spring which indicates ability to resist the deformation ductility brittleness and all previous property as hardness toughness resilience and creep second part of unit number 2 is engineering materials and their classification this is very important for mcq exam that is phase 1 exam so materials are normally classified as metals and non metals so non metals in sub category non metals are leather plastic ceramic rubber which is called as elastomer wood and glass in metal category it is classified as ferrous and non ferrous non ferrous means there is no content of iron so non ferrous we have two basic elements aluminum and copper copper as again classified as their alloys copper alloy as brass and bronze remember brass is consist of copper plus zinc whereas bronze is consist of copper plus tin there is no relation of this z and with this z third one is babbits which is very common material for bearing next top part of classification is ferrous material that is cast iron and plain carbon steel in plain carbon steel again classified as low carbon called as mild steel medium carbon and high carbon percentage are less than 0.3 for low carbon up to 0.6 for medium and greater than 0.6 is high carbon in all the steel percentage of carbon is less than 1.7 otherwise it becomes into the cast iron category in cast iron it is a brittle material where the percentage of carbon is 1.7 to 4 added with the silicon and other elements this is a basic classification chart for engineering materials